divided by. Where does your almond milk come from? Almond Breed starts here with our almond trees in our Blue Diamond Orchard in California. My parents' job is to look after them. And it's my job to test the product. The best almonds make the best almond milk. Blue Diamond Almond Breeze. No. Come on, him. I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker and is two times more absorbent so you can use less. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. Before we go, one more star confession that many parents have an opinion on. Mm. The great bathing debate of 2021. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis started all when they said they only wash their kids Ooh. when they can see dirt on them. Now, what? Hollywood had a field day with this one. And Lauren Zima got Mila's hot or cold take. For everybody. Bye, guys. Y'all better get some wash costs out. Oh, Lord. Just come on. Mm, yeah. Scrub. I'm sure you're you're sick of talking about the bath debate. I mean, I'm now literally going to be like, no comment. If you can see the dirt <laughs> happening now. Getting a COVID test just may have gotten a lot harder. There is a post-Christmas at-home testing kit shortage, and that's making the lines longer at COVID testing sites. Tired of those never-ending robocalls? You are not alone. You know why these people have my number? Coming up, we have some solutions to keep your phone pest-free. More unseasonably warm days ahead. However, a strong cold front is on the horizon. I'll be back in a bit to chat about it. And first at five, long lines across the city telling the story of another holiday that is continuing into the new year. Yeah, fear that the Omicron variant can pass through cloth masks is frustrating the people who are trying to stop the virus. So you have that, plus a shortage of at-home COVID tests across the region, and that is creating some very long lines at testing sites that are taking walk-ins. That's right. In the week after Christmas, many people are now realizing the one Christmas gift they really, truly wanted and needed is no longer available. It's very hard to find a at-home test right now. Chris Castillo just wants to know if he has COVID, but he's learning it's not so easy anymore. We went to one of the emergency rooms and unless you're admitted, they're not doing any COVID testing or flu testing right now. The lines at this testing site at the University of the Incarnate Word are long, but people are willing. They've been gathering for the holidays and they're looking for peace of mind. I've had a sore throat and some coughing, but I just presumed, you know, allergies, Texas. But now one of Veronica Heckerman's family members is positive. And the at-home tests that were so abundant last week? Right on their counter. They had so many. Not anymore. Online sites are sold out too, with delivery promises not until the second or third week of 2022. And that's not all. There have been recent reports that the variant Omicron can break through cloth masks. And that is frustrating health care providers who want and need us to remain vigilant, especially in areas where this virus will spread. The better masks or the higher filtration masks are better than uh, others, but it's really a combination of, of human behaviors that really can reduce your risk of infection. He admits COVID fatigue is real. His hope that the White House can make good on getting more of those at home test kits into homes. Hopefully that, you know, they'll be able to manage those distribution issues because all of us are feel that, you know, adequate supply of testing is, a, again, another element of our tools. I think we'd all like good news. And maybe here's a bit of that good news. If you are diagnosed with COVID-19, the CDC is now recommending a shorter isolation period. As of today, the CDC cutting the time of quarantine from 10 days to five days. That also goes for those who you've come in close contact with. The CDC says there's growing evidence that you are most infectious in the two days before and the three days after your symptoms develop. You can read more about this on ksat.com. Now, in the meantime, the only monoclonal antibody treatment that's effective against this Omicron variant is no longer available anywhere in the state. The Texas Department of State Health Services says that regional infusion centers in Austin, El Paso, Fort Worth, the Woodlands, and right here in San Antonio have just exhausted their supply. So this treatment isn't going to be available until next month. State Health Services says that people who had appointments set up for this week are going to be notified about this. Now, these infusion centers still have other monoclonal antibody treatments available for COVID variants other than Omicron and will offer those as prescribed by health care providers. 
Now, you know, this isn't exactly what we wanted, but the CDC says that Omicron now accounts for a majority of new COVID cases. Something like 90 percent of what we're seeing here in San Antonio and Texas is a trend that's going on all across the U.S. From New Hampshire to California, COVID testing lines stretching around the block. Many families all there for the same reason, concerned that they could spread the virus after recently traveling. Right now, President Biden says the government is working to make more testing widely available. I know the lines have gotten very long in some states. That's why I ordered FEMA to set up pop-up sites in places with high demand. And this is not like March of 2020, the beginning of the pandemic. We're prepared and we know what it takes to save lives. But here's the other thing. Right now, we're also seeing an increase in pediatric hospitalizations. Those are up 80 percent over the last four weeks. So right now, state leaders are calling on parents to take advantage of this winter break when most kids are home to go and get their kids vaccinated. New at five charges now upgraded for a man who caused a Christmas Eve crash that killed a pregnant woman's baby. Gerardo Lozano now facing an intoxication manslaughter charge. He was initially charged with three counts of intoxication assault for the Friday night crash. It happened near 38th Street and amid his place. Police say that Lozano ran a stop sign then crashed his SUV into a pickup truck. The impact forcing that truck across an intersection and into a retaining wall. A pregnant woman and her two year old child were injured, taken to the hospital. The pregnant woman did undergo surgery to help save the baby. The baby was put on oxygen, but then died two days later. In other news, a really close call for a man who's in stable condition now in the hospital. A truck hit his vehicle, which caused it to roll off the highway. Firefighters, when they got there, actually had to help get him out. Happened along Loop 1604 between O'Connor and Judson Roads around 2 this morning. At this point, it's unclear if the driver who caused that crash is going to face charges. We have an update now on the search for a man missing with his three children. The Amber Alert has been called off for Jonathan Lucas and Ariana Wright. They've been found safe. The three reported missing last week. They were believed to be with their father, who authorities say was wanted for sex crimes against minors in North Carolina. According to the Medina County Sheriff's Office, the children were found around 1030 last night in a field with their father. He's now in custody of the Medina County Sheriff's Office. Jury deliberations continuing this week in the sex trafficking trial of Ghislaine Maxwell. Today is the third full day of deliberations, and the jury's made a few requests. They've asked for office supplies, trial testimony, and more information on the definition of enticement. Maxwell is charged with grooming teens for abuse during the 90s and 2000s with Jeffrey Epstein. She's pleaded not guilty. Epstein is said to have killed himself in a New York jail cell in 2019 while awaiting his own sex trafficking trial. And outside today, we started off with the morning fog, giving way to a lot of sunshine by the afternoon. We started the morning at 60 degrees, which is 21 degrees above average for this time of year in terms of the low temperature. And we topped out at 77 with the average high being 63. So obviously well above average, but not everywhere as 68 Eagle Pass near 70 actually right now in Del Rio and Warren's backyard. The clouds really held tight longer farther to the west of town and that's where temperatures were limited a bit. But near Laverne, about 80 degrees, New Braunfels now at 81. As we go through the evening, mild, humid, more fog, more drizzle, and Sam, if you don't like this warm weather for the holidays, just get ready. We have a cold front on the horizon. I'll talk about that in a bit. Forward to that, Adam. But here's a uh, look at traffic this evening. This was supposed to be one of the busier uh, travel days following the Christmas holiday, getting ready for the New Year's holiday. And we have a situation here. This is a uh, 37 at I-10. So let's take a uh, closer look at uh, that this uh, this afternoon. And so you can see not many too much volume there. Uh, we do have an issue out east here. There is a rollover at I-10 eastbound at FM 1518. So that caused some delays out to Seguin. Now those are down to 39 minutes, typically down to uh, 30 minutes. But uh, we'll keep an eye on things. There are some also some issues on 35 as well. Ursula. Thank you, Sam. It is the season of giving and the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center needs your help. All month long, the Blood Center has been holding several events to try to reach a goal, but they have not yet met it. The Blood Center has been battling low blood supply levels all year long, 
Blood is needed in many situations, including helping car accident victims, helping during surgeries, and cancer patients. So if you're interested in donating, they have some incentives going on, including a partnership with Centicos. You can learn all about it if you head over to SouthTexasBlood.org. So you may have heard about how the Texas Biomedical Research Institute was involved in the study of those COVID-19 vaccines. And our Case That Explains team produced an episode of that show focused on that this year. Texas Biomed located on the west side, not too far from Highway 151 and Loop 410. It's been around for 80 years, but many people don't even know it exists or better yet, what exactly it does. Myra Arthur explains that plus how COVID changed everything. Texas Biomedical Research Institute has had a hand in working on the first Ebola treatment and the first treatment for hepatitis C. We have the ability to handle uh, research and development related to any infectious diseases because we have tremendous history and experience related to what is called biocontainment research. Biocontainment research is done in biosafety labs, labs that are designed to allow scientists to study contagious viruses without releasing those viruses. These labs are ranked biosafety level one through four. BSL-1 is for pathogens that don't really pose a threat. BSL-2 is for human diseases that pose a moderate hazard, like hepatitis viruses. BSL-3 labs are used when dealing with pathogens that may cause serious or potentially lethal disease through inhalation. And then biocontainment level four is the highest level containment where um, we work on infectious agents safely on uh, those agents like Ebola virus that have no current cures. This video shows one of the Institute's researchers preparing to do work at a BSL-4 lab. She's putting on this air-supplied positive pressure suit to take a look at data related to a study on the Ebola virus. There are safety precautions that researchers must take when entering and exiting. The lab has its own ventilation system and airtight doors, and the data stored there cannot be removed. Texas Biomed also has thousands of animals on its campus, more than 2,500 non-human primates and about 5,000 rodents. Those animals played a critical role in the study of the COVID-19 virus and vaccine. Human trials are really good, but before the human trials, you have to make sure something's safe and effective in human, uh, in animals. Uh, so that we know it's going to be safe when we put it into humans. The data collected from the animal studies was used to help prove that the mRNA vaccines were safe enough to be used in human clinical trials. The mRNA vaccines have been in development for a long time and for other infections. So then they're, they're not new to science. I think they're new to the public. Researchers here say the effectiveness of those vaccines and the collaboration that led to their development could be a game changer for the treatment of other outbreaks and diseases. I think the future uh, will be a very different type of vision from my perspective where organizations like Texas Biomed can participate in a much more proactive, sustainable way to help avert these pandemics, which will occur again. Uh, in the future. To check out this or any episode of KSAT Explains On Demand, go to ksat.com slash explains or scan the QR code you see on your screen. Look for brand new episodes after the new year. Here's something we can all relate to, robocalls. They are so annoying, sometimes hard to stop. While a new law has reduced the number of calls you get daily, there's a chance you still have some stragglers. So coming up next, we're gonna share some other ways you can stop the spoof calls. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by Pam Hospitals. Hi, my name is Leslie Rodriguez. I'm an Air Force veteran who completed two tours in Iraq. And I personally have the experience of being overseas during the holidays, and I know how difficult that can be being away from your family. And we just want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, and that we are thinking of you. Now, the search for little Lena Keel is now in day eight, and that's one of the very many stories that we're working on for you at six o'clock. If you remember, that little girl disappeared last Monday at a playground in northwest San Antonio. And our Daphne Gray is going to speak to a group as they pray for the safe return of that three-year-old girl. That's at six o'clock. 
New at five, battling those annoying robo calls. Chances are you get them pretty often, if not every day. Now there are some new laws in place to help you put them to a stop or help put them to a stop. As 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz tells us there are some simple things you can do. Your phone rings. You think maybe it's a call I've been waiting for or a friend calling to catch up, but instead, you hear this. If we don't hear from you, then we will be forced to take legal action against you. Peo Cueva says he's stressed out from getting so many robocalls. I don't know why these people have my number. It might not feel like it, but robocalls are actually on the decline. 4.1 billion calls were placed in October. But a recent deadline imposed by the TRACED Act requires carriers to certify that they're using something called stir shaken technology. The stir shaken is designed to help identify spoofed calls. Uh, they use fake numbers to trick you into answering the phone. Those calls are labeled as a risk or blocked altogether. The service is free and there's nothing consumers need to do to take advantage of it. But there are even more steps you can take to help you avoid as many robocalls as possible. Whitelisting only allows calls from people in your contact list. You can search online for directions to install the tool on your Apple or Android phone. The downside? You risk missing calls from a doctor's office or a delivery person whose number isn't stored in your phone. There are also third party robocall blocking apps and those can help. Some of those apps charge a fee while others offer a free subscription or a free trial. If you use a free trial, just be sure you cancel before the trial is over if you don't want to be charged a monthly fee. Press one now if you wish to extend or reinstate your car's warranty. Depending on your phone and carrier, you may need to manually activate your phone's call blocking services. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, 516 right now, taking our live cam right now outside of the Arneson Word. There is some sort of a fun pep rally going on. Awesome, awesome weather out there right now. 75 degrees, Adam. Yeah, it's warm out there, that's for sure. Uh, many of us enjoy it this time of year like this. Some folks don't like it so much. We have something for everybody in the forecast. Unseasonably warm and humid for several more days. That's going to also mean more fog and drizzle for uh, at least a handful of days uh, the rest of this week. The cold front hits Saturday night, so if you want that cooler weather and actual winter like temperatures or more seasonable temperatures, you got to wait until the second half of the upcoming weekend. Actually, let's take a look at the month of December as a whole. So far, December 2021, an average temperature of about 63.2 degrees. You see that far exceeds the average temperatures of December's over the past 20 years. So yes, it's not just you, it's not just me. This is abnormally uh, warmer than average. And not only that, we haven't had anything like it, at least over the past 20 years. Look at the readings now. Pleasanton 84, 82 Catula, basically along and east of I-35. The clouds broke up quicker than locations west of I-35. Kerrville 65, Uvalde 66, Carrizo Springs and Del Rio at 70. So it's quite a temperature contrast out there. And that's a result of the low fog and drizzle and morning clouds really holding tight west of I-35. You see how they retreated through the morning and especially midday they started to retreat westward but still lingering along parts of the Rio Grande there from Del Rio toward Camado and into Eagle Pass. In turn, you didn't get as much sunshine, so it's not going to be quite as warm, of course, underneath those clouds. So that's so why Uvalde's at 66, but Pleasanton, 83 degrees. Of course, temperatures are very dependent upon that sunshine. And there is actually a weak cold front to the north of us, basically along I-20 in North Texas and some cooler air behind it. Amarillo 48, and Lubbock at 61 in Oklahoma City 55. This is not the cold front that's going to be headed our way. There is some much colder air though behind that front. I mean, you get up into the Northland, Bismarck six below, Cup Bank, Montana 13 below, and some even colder air is going to dislodge from Canada and start to push southward. Again, it's going to take several days, so you need some patience if you want the colder air. We go through Friday on into Saturday. Our high temperatures stay right near 80 degrees. Then Saturday night, boom, that cold front hits and colder air moves into place. We're not talking a big deep freeze or anything like that. OK, I want to make that clear, but we could have our first freeze by Monday morning of next week in San Antonio. Officially, we could have our first freeze then. But you look at the high temperatures right near 80 all the way through Saturday. Ringing in 2022, 
at 81 degrees. Sorry, it takes me a minute. I have to stop. Wait, what month is it? What year is I'm not the only one. And then we get into the 50s for highs by Sunday and Monday. Dew points right now in the 60s. Get used to that. We could see a brief drop off on Thursday from the dry line, but that's it until the cold front arrives in terms of a real drop in humidity. That's not going to be until Sunday. Big picture shows the activity away from us. The showers are on the West Coast in the Western US. That's a good thing, though, they need it. Around here, we're looking dry for the foreseeable future. Fog in the morning, dampness 63 to start, then 78 by the afternoon. More of the same the rest of the week. Cold front hits Saturday night, and then boom, we're only in the 50s for highs on Sunday and windy, too. Just Texas in December. Thank you. There you have it. All right, now let's keep talking about Texas. The Spurs at home playing Utah. And you know what? Playing off of Adam, they're boom. That's what the Spurs did to the Pistons <laughs> last night. I mean, they just punched them in the face. Now tonight, though, the Spurs will have a much more difficult task against the Utah Jazz and back-to-back -back games. And Steele alum Terrence Steele, the big man, caught a touchdown last night. He's loving it. Coming up. Winners of three straight. The Spurs will put their streak on the line tonight at home with the Utah Jazz. Last night, the Spurs dropped the hammer on the Pistons 144 to 109. The Spurs took the lead for good 15 to 14 and led by as many as 39 points in the second half. Kelvin Johnson led the way with 27 points, making 10 of 12 field goals. Jock Landell added 18 points off the bench, and Jakob Pertl was next in line with 14 points. Every Spur played, and all 14 of them scored. That includes first round draft pick Joshua Primo, who hit three three pointers to finish with nine points. Keldon was asked if he remembers what it was like being in Primo's shoes and he said the situation is very different. I mean, it's a lot different. They love Primo. <laughs> Ooh, the, the crowd go crazy for Primo. I mean, no, <laughs> but you know, I slowly won everybody over, you know, did my time. But you know, it's definitely, I mean, it's exciting to see, you know, Primo is going to be a great player, and uh, to see him, you know, take the, take the, all the right steps, you know, and you know, his time is coming for sure. Utah comes to town on a three-game winning streak. They beat the Mavs on Christmas Day, 120 to 116, and they enter the day third in the Western Conference. Tip is 7:30 tonight at the AT&T Center. The Spurs lead the season series one to nothing, winning 10 days ago in Utah, 128 to 126. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys wrapped up the NFC East crown before stepping on the field last night, and then they demolished the Washington football team 56-14. Dallas played a complete game after struggling at Washington two weeks ago, where they won 27-20. Last night, Dak Prescott threw for 330 yards and four touchdowns, including one to offensive lineman Terrence Steele from Steele High School, a one-yarder in the second quarter to make it 35-7 Cowboys. Terrence was one of three offensive linemen to catch touchdowns yesterday, the most ever in one day in NFL history. First off, when they called the play, I just tried to play it off as normal. I didn't want to get too excited or anything. I just wanted to keep everything as normal. And uh, when the play happened, it's just that's every old lineman's dream, you know, just catch a touchdown. Uh, I, I blocked and I just tried to get my head around as fast as possible, and uh, it was there, and I caught it. So you all Perfect ball from deck. Steele spiked his touchdown and it bounced into some fans. So running back Ezekiel Elliott got the ball to make sure Terrence got to keep it and add it to his trophy case. All right, good stuff. We'll be right back after this. All right, now. <laughs> thanks so much for watching the <laughs> News at 5. We'll see you at 6. Guys.